Hey, Redcon Raider here. And welcome to Slay the Princess. A nice, wholesome game involving princesses and or slaying, and possibly some minor conflation between the two. It's another title from Black Tabby Games, the fine folks who brought us Scarlet Harlow, which, of course, you know I love. That's a, another nice, wholesome title wherein uh, you have a homecoming to a nice, quaint, rural town. You meet some colorful characters and a strange family, the occasional talking animal, some ancient ghosts and uh, vengeful revenants. You know, small-town America. Anyway, we will, uh, of course, be jumping into this thing momentarily, but before we do, I should thank the Raiders, the other fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, a nerd in war paint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatleib, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Poppinskip, and Valenrook. Uh, I hate that. Okay, well, um. You know, I. I was. There were, there were more things I was going to say, but I, I can't really talk with that staring at me. You know what? Let's just get started. Slay the Princess by Black Tabby Games. Here we go! Chapter 1. The Hero and the Princess You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. The end of the world, you say? What, what exactly are we talking about here? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Okay, sure, yeah, that does track, I guess. Can't save a world without cracking a few princesses. But, you know, I I've got to ask, how exactly does a princess locked in a basement end the world? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Not to, not to be obstinate, but I don't suppose you have any evidence to back up these claims about apocalyptic princesses. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. Hmm, right, right. You know, the thought does occur that maybe she only wants to end the world because you locked her in a basement and sent people to kill her. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she is dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. I mean, if you insist, it's just... Slaying princesses instead of saving them, that, that feels kind of weird. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman, or a miller, or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Yeah, but see, I don't really slay those people either. I don't suppose you've got other people who can maybe take care of this? People without all these hang-ups about princess slaying? Oh, if only that were the case. But I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far. 
but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. All right, well... Look, I'll uh, I'll go to the cabin. I'll I'll have a talk with her, and if she is as bad as you say, then I might just go ahead and slay her. But I want to see what she has to say about all this. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But a word of warning: if you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. Fine, I will. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Oh, hello. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Does he not? I feel like he was kind of echoing my own reservations about this whole situation. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Yeah, I think we'll just uh, leave that where that is for now. No sense in toting around a giant blade when you're trying to have a civil conversation. With a princess, no less. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Oh, sure. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Hey, uh, just, uh, thought I'd pop on down and maybe check on you. you. You seem to be locked in a basement. You are? It's been so long since anyone's come down here. I I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. I'm a little more concerned about that empty chain. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Uh, yeah, maybe, but uh, I was thinking we might just talk first. Okay... Yeah, very, very large eyes. So, uh, so what's your name? Oh. She pauses, carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness. Or you can just call me princess if your royal highness is too formal. Is princess her name or her title? What if it's both? Do you imagine being named Princess Princess? 
I mean, I feel like there's probably people who are named like that. Hey, uh, just to clarify, is Princess your title, or is that your actual name? Like I said, you can call me Princess, if you'd like. Uh, fair enough. I'm sorry, I've been down here so long, I guess I've just forgotten. I must have a name, though. Everyone has a name. Okay, that's weird. You think? She hadn't even thought to pick a name for herself. Hopefully, you're starting to see that she can't be trusted. Go back upstairs, get the blade, and slay her before it's too late. Okay, look, it is weird, but we're not quite at the point of stabbing just yet. I have other questions. If you've been down here by yourself for so long you forgot your name, how have you survived? I don't see what that has to do with anything. This is the only time this is ever going to happen, but I agree with the princess. That's hardly relevant. I feel like it's very relevant. Okay, but actually, what has she been eating? She has to eat, right? Yeah, under normal circumstances, I believe most people do. Okay, look, I just met you, and this is crazy, but if there's a reason you're down here, could you tell me, maybe? Of course I'm locked up down here for a reason. Oh? I don't actually know what that reason is, but you don't just stuff a princess in a basement and throw away the key without there being some sort of an explanation, right? You have all the explanation you need, and you should know better than to trust whatever she comes up with. All right, let's try this. If I were, if I were to hypothetically let you out of this basement, what, what would you do? The princess hesitates before responding. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. Are you looking for the truth, or are you looking for the right answer? Because with the dynamic we have going on here, I don't think the specifics of what I do really matter. It's not like you'd believe me. That is both fair and also not an answer. But, okay, fine, look, um, I'm not going to mince words. I was sent here to kill you because apparently you're a threat to the entire world. But, you know, I, uh, I wanted to see you with my own eyes, and uh, I'm not really sure what to think just yet. It, is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I, I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here for so long. That's... How long has she been locked away? That's a good question. Did they tell you how I'm supposed to end the world? You know, they didn't, but uh, I was really hoping you might be able to help me with that. I don't know how to destroy the world, if that's what you're getting at. I believe her. She doesn't have to know how to destroy the world to be capable of doing it. Hmm. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. I don't trust that, and I don't think you do either, or you wouldn't have come down here to talk. Sure. She has a point. We're talking like this for a reason. So this shouldn't be about what I'd do if I got out of here, or me saying the right thing to convince you to save me. This is about how messed up this whole situation is. This is my life we're talking about. Do you really think I can even end the world? Why would I even want to? 
We both know that if there's people we can't trust in this situation, it's whoever locked me down here, and it's whoever sent you here, and those two groups are probably one and the same. Don't let her turn the tables here. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person, and a subjugating monarch, no less. Oh boy, I am uh, more confused than ever. I, I can't help but notice that no one ever gives me any straight answers here. Look, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what to think, but maybe we could reach some sort of happy compromise here. I won't kill you, but I will also not set you free. But I'll, uh, I'll stay here and we'll just keep chatting and, until I get a better idea of what's going on. At least this way you'll have company. That seems like a pretty good compromise. Thank you, me. I don't think I could bear being down here that much longer. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. So, I'm the only one who liked that idea. <sighs> no, no, I, I liked it too. Sorry. One way or another, I'm going to find a way out of here. It would make it easier for both of us if you'd help. Princess, I, I can't help but notice a slight tonal shift here. But if you don't, I can promise that you'll regret that decision. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes it's the right one. You know what? I just realized I forgot something upstairs. I'll, I'll be right back. Thank you. You turn back to the stairs, intent on retrieving the blade in the cabin. Where are you going? You can't just leave me here. Fine. Turn your back on me. But it won't be long before I slip these chains. And once I'm out of here, there will be hell to pay for leaving me behind. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. She has to be bluffing, but... hurry. Yeah, yeah. You rush up to the first floor, grabbing the blade, both yours and the world's only possible salvation. Okay. If we're sure about this decision, I'll support it. I suppose we have a world to save, after all. You slowly creep down the basement stairs. It's quiet. Too quiet? Where the princess sat only a moment ago, there's only a severed arm. Princess is nowhere to be seen. This is probably fine. Is it just me? Or did this room get a lot bigger? Hey, princess, uh, you know, I think we might have gotten off on the wrong foot here. Why don't you come back out and we can... Uh... We can give this another shot. Oh, you coward. Shut up. I'm doing a thing. No, I don't think we can. Why don't you come closer? I have something to show you. I've got to say, I feel like she's done a pretty good job of mortally wounding herself. Uh, I feel like we could just go upstairs and maybe lock the door and call it a day. This is a dangerous play. Who's to say she'll actually succumb to her wounds? She doesn't have a weapon, and she's missing an arm. You can finish this right here, right now. All right, all right. I mean, you were right from the get-go, so I guess we might as well stay and finish this. 
Your eyes dart to the corners of the room. You don't see her. Where is she? Let's just, uh, maybe close that door. You close the door behind you. Almost magically, its locks immediately click into place. Maybe they'll open if you finish the job. This isn't right. Where is she? Come on out, princess. Let's just get this over with. I can wait. I'm very patient. Well, hey, I can wait too. So I guess we're both just waiting. You do your best to patiently wait her out. But eventually, exhaustion starts to set in. Right, right. Sometimes I forget about the frailties of these mortal frames. Come on, wake up. We can't fall asleep down here. Okay, into the shadows we go. This'll end well. You step into the shadows. Too late, you hear the quiet patter of feet against the basement floor, followed by the taut pull and sharp pain of tearing flesh as the princess lunges into you from behind and drags you to the floor. Holy shit. What is she? Oh, yeah, this is happening. You roll the princess off your back and turn to face her, rising to your knees and readying your blade. Those eyes. She's going to kill us. Yes, things do look a little grim, don't they? Our friend is losing quite a lot of blood. But there's a reason she's struck with an ambush. She's not confident about a direct confrontation. Just because she's playing it safe doesn't mean we have the upper hand. Come on now. Don't let your confidence waver. This is an important moment. I'm going to kill you. The princess leaps onto you as you raise your blade in defense. You find your what? target and time after time you strike, but the wounds she inflicted in her ambush hinder your movements, and with each fresh exchange you're a little slower, a little weaker. Wait, am I? You seek solace in the fact that she is slowing too. Finally, she collapses, and you collapse beside her. If you think this is it, you're sorely mistaken. One way or another, I'll make sure you pay for this. Your grasp on the blade weakens. It slips from your numb fingers, lying uselessly on the floor. This can't be how it ends, right? I'm sorry, but it is. If we're lucky, the wounds she sustained will take her before too long. But our friend isn't making it out of this basement. Everything goes dark, and you die. Hey, look, it happens. No need to beat yourself up over it. Death comes for us all. Chapter 2. The Beast. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. Oh yeah? You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Okay. Am I the only one with a terrible sense of deja vu here? A terrible sense of deja vu? No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us has been here. Oh, my mistake. Carry on. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. I can still feel each and every puncture and laceration. That beast hurt us, but we are going to hurt her back. Oh, uh, hi. That's new. Oh, is there another one of us in here? Good. It seems like your head's in the right place. If you can all just stay focused on the task at hand, the princess will be good and slain in no time at all. 
Right, right, yeah. D don't you worry about that. I will gladly slay the princess this time. She, she's definitely got it coming. Such magnificent gusto. We'll all be in the clear in no time. I have one last warning for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. He's right, you know. She's a clever one, and determined too. Keep your eyes open and your senses sharp, because we're not going to let her get the best of us again. Ignore him, she's just a princess. Don't overestimate her. I'm getting some real mixed signals here, buddy. The interior of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like no one has lived here for a long time, wind rushing in through cracks and holes in the wooden walls. The only item of furniture is a plain termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Yes, do it. Take the blade and make her pay for what she's done. Okay. Room looks different. You take the blade from the table. It'd be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Yeah, learned that one the hard way. The door to the basement creeps open, revealing what's left of an old wooden staircase. It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to step over a few holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're stepping down into a jungle. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. It isn't hypnotizing anymore. It's almost feral. Don't let her intimidate you. Okay. You carefully make your way down the stairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view, a large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. She has both her arms again, and she's different, isn't she? The beast is showing us what she really is. Yeah. You, you're the reason I'm still down here. Fiend, monster, betrayer. Nothing will get between my teeth and your throat. Cat. Hey, Layla. <laughs> oh, are we done? Okay. Fair enough, it is just a demo. That was interesting. That was interesting. Very, very well presented. But I have come to expect that from the Scarlet Hollow folk. And it, uh, it says here that there's seven more endings in this demo, so... You know, we've got time. Let's go for another one. Look at all these fine folks that we have to thank for this fine game. I am curious to see just how much sort of granular reactivity there might be in this thing. Scarlet Hollow's got a lot of branching paths. Also, Layla has just set up, like, permanent camp right in front of my keyboard right now. <laughs> There's just something about the art in this game that she really seems to like. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in you're here to slay her. Ah, if you okay. don't, it will be the end of the world. We'll try not to retread too much. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're to slay the princess. Got it. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Proceed. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. 
The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. We're going to talk this out again, but uh, I want to see if she changes her tune if we go down armed. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's commanding. Almost as though she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. That's different. It was hypnotizing when we came down here unarmed. When we were giving her the benefit of the doubt. Very intriguing. Well, now I'm curious how she would react to various other approaches. Hey, uh, Retcon Raider here. I think I'm here to kill you? You must have the wrong address. Oh, do I? My mistake. Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. Thanks. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. You weren't kidding when you said you were here to kill me. What? what? Me? Kill you? <laughs> no. Oh, that, that thing I said when I was coming down the stairs. No, that was that was just a jape, a joke. Why, why would you even think something like that? Hmm, maybe because of the giant knife you're holding? Oh, right. The blade. Of course she doesn't want to talk. Who'd want to have a conversation at knife point? We should drop it. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster, but killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. I'm not so sure about that. We seem to have a serious case of monster hand going on at the end of that last arc. But yes, let's uh, let us retain our blade this time. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see the razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. What if, uh, what if it turns out she's not bluffing and she is a, a horrible monster and she does kill us? You go into this expecting to die. You're going to die. Hesitating? Why don't you drop the knife and the two of us can be civilized with each other? No, no, I don't think I will. Then I'm not talking to you. Well, fine. I'm not talking to you either. I guess we're at an impasse. I guess we are. For the love of everything, just slay her already. Or drop the blade. Do something. Look, the voices in my head are saying I should just stab you. Are you sure you don't want to talk? 
Yeah, I'm sure. Fair enough. For goodness sake, the two of you can't just stand around like this forever. Eventually, something is going to give, and I highly recommend that you be the one to take the initiative here. Okay, okay. Well, we won't have to go back upstairs for it this time. That's when she freed herself before. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just... talk. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. Yeah, see, now her eyes are giant again. It's like the more receptive you are, the more like Disney princess she gets. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. Right. So, this is a pretty awkward start to a relationship. Yeah, yeah, I'll admit, uh, on a scale of one to awkward, this is uh, leaning leaning towards awkward. Not to make things even more awkward, but do you know why you're here to kill me? <laughs> I mean, of, of course I do. You really think I'd come down here to kill a princess without knowing why I'm why I'm doing it? And yet you hesitated the moment you saw me, and you dropped your knife. If killing me was really that important, you would have had a little more gumption, don't you think? Hmm. So, someone put you up to this, right? And whoever it is, it's probably the same someone who shoved me into this dark pit and chained me to a wall. That's a fair question. Who chained her in this basement, and if she's so dangerous, how did they manage to trap her? And why have we been left to do their dirty work? Don't give away the game, and don't let her distract you. That's exactly what she wants. I'm right, aren't I? So who put you up to this? Well, there are, uh, there are people out there who feel that you pose an existential threat to the entire world. What do you, what do you say to that? Don't just tell her that. Why not? Do you believe that? Do you think I'm some sort of... <laughs> monster? Yeah, yeah, yes, very much so. Did they even bother to tell you how I'm supposed to end the world? Because that just doesn't sound like the sort of thing I'd be capable of. I'm getting some strong... like, Tulpa vibes here. You know, they did not, but uh, I'm sure they've got their reasons to keep that from me. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Sure. What if they're bad reasons, though? If they had good reasons for thinking I was dangerous, wouldn't they have shared them with you? I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want to leave. Look, at the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. That doesn't sound right to me, and I don't think it sounds right to you, either. Otherwise, we'd be killing each other instead of talking. She has a point. There's a reason I've been telling you to question the situation, and there's a reason you've listened. So, I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or any other number of good things that I'm sure you want to hear. But you don't really know me, do you? What can my word possibly be worth in a situation like this? She's right about one thing. Her word isn't worth anything. Like I said, it's all about trust. Blind trust. So, do you trust me, the prisoner, 
the victim, the princess clearly incapable of ending the world, or do you trust whoever put me here? She's wrong. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person, and a subjugating monarch no less. Okay, I think... I think this has gone on long enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. Well, I mean, uh, I gotta say, before I got here, just keeping you locked in a basement seemed to be working out fine. So, uh, why don't we just keep doing that? I'm gonna go back upstairs, lock the door, and uh, we'll all just go on existing. That seems like a pretty good compromise. Yeah, I thought so too. Didn't work out so great last time, but uh, second time's the charm. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. One way or another, I'm going to find a way out of here. You can make it easier for both of us if you help. And if you don't, I can promise that you'll come to regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes it's the right one. Uh, yeah, I made my choice. It's to go back upstairs and lock the door. I know you think this is a fair compromise, but it isn't. No one wins here. It's a chance we'll have to take. We can make this work. If we just stay here and keep watch, no one has to die. You're making a mistake. We all make mistakes. You turn your back to the princess and make your way to the stairs. It won't be long before I slip these chains. And once I'm out of here, there will be hell to pay for leaving me behind. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? Either way, she dropped her mask, didn't she? You can still turn around and finish the job. No, 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 we'll, uh... We'll see this through. You'll be the death of all of us, but fine. Have it your way. You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Huh? It's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrifying. Like she's less of the princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. You don't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. So what, this really was just an act? You really are some sort of world-ending monster? You're not innocent or harmless at all, are you? I'll bet you're not even a princess. I can be innocent and harmless, if I want to be. Teasing me with fresh air and a chance to finally live freely doesn't inspire me to play nice. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. 
You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped, and the door to the basement is ajar, its lock broken, and the table shoved out of the way. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I thought that was going to work. The door opens inward. Barricading it with a table does nothing. Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Witness me. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer, one silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only helped me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. This is fine. Oh, chapter two. The Nightmare. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. O okay, no, 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 no. Oh, don't you start grandstanding about morals. The fate of the world is at risk right now, and the life of a mere princess shouldn't stop you from saving us all. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Are we sure we don't just want to turn around and hightail it out of here? She's going to do unspeakable things to us if we go back there. Oh, is there another one of us in here? You're a voice of reason, right? Tell them we shouldn't go to the cabin. Tell them we shouldn't even bother. You are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff that pathetic little voice to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. This is fascinating. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I get it, I get it. I'm going, I'm going to the cabin to slay the princess. I have one last warning for you. She will lie she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Oh god, we can't go in there. Do either of you feel sick? Because I feel sick just thinking about that place. We're going to die. You should be careful. There's something very wrong going on here. Ignore them. They don't know what they're talking about. She's just a princess. No reason to get all freaked out. Uh-huh. Just a princess. Nothing... nothing to worry about at all. The interior of the cabin is plain, the smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only item of furniture is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. 
no, 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 no. The basement door. It isn't there anymore. She could be anywhere. It's just... it's just a frame. She's already gotten out, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. No, no, what did you do? This isn't how things are supposed to go. She's supposed to be an ordinary princess. Quick, the blade. Go ahead and take your little toy. It won't do you any good. Your legs go numb before you even have a chance to reach for the blade. You collapse to the floor as your lungs seize up, refusing to take in air. No! Not again! I didn't think you'd come back. We're going to have a lot of fun, you and I. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. Everything goes dark, and you die. I'm sorry. Hey, you know, don't beat yourself up. These things happen. Okay, you know, we're past time, but um, let's go again. No faffing about this time. We're going to slay ourselves a princess. You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. I'm on it. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. We're not going to go through with this, right? Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Gotcha. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Yep. You take the blade from the table. The door to the basement creaks open. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's commanding. Almost as though she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. Uh-huh. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She's so coldly beautiful. Focus on the task at hand. Are you here to kill me or something? I have no words. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Yeah, okay. Stabby, stabby. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Yeah, we've got some uh, serious monster hand going on here. Which makes sense. That's, that's also our cursor. Oh. This is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming, but... I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and the terrifying conviction in her words. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. 
But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? No, no, of course not. That was too easy. It's over. Don't get all worked up. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. Huh. Okay. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of space. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. Gotta say, narrator, I was really hoping I'd get a better ending for saving the world. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of eternity. Your reward. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just going to stay here forever, right? Why would we not? Didn't you hear the narrator? I'm clearly happy. We're, we're all happy. This is our happy ending. Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? Huh. You know, I never thought of it that way. You make a good point, Nate. Maybe, maybe I'm not happy. Good, because I have an idea to get us out of here. Though you're probably not going to like it. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. Oh? I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on, and I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. I see. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do, and the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. Okay, well, my, my, main, my main concern here is that uh, using... The knife would, uh, kill me? How astute. You are absolutely correct. Using the blade to kill yourself would kill you, and you shouldn't do it. I mean, yeah, I've got to say me, that sounds like a pretty good argument. Uh, counterpoint? In a sense, we die, but looking at things from another angle, are we even really alive anymore? This place, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing, it's just... The same thing, constantly, forever. Yeah, I, I think that's just called life. I know this is out there, but trust me, I know using the blade will work. That little voice didn't want you to slay the princess. It didn't want you to be happy. Oh, 
All right, me. You know, uh, I guess we'll do things your way. But I gotta say, if this actually makes me dead dead, I, I am going to be very, very cross with myself. If we die, die, you can yell at me all you want. Deal. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You... you... ingrate? Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. Yeah, I'm like a... like a raptor man. How'd they know? The end. Nice knowing you. Likewise. Chapter 2. The Spectre. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. Oh, you. <laughs> All right, narrator. I'm onto your tricks now. I've got my eye on you. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. Oh, is there another one of us in here? I've always been here. I've just gotten a little louder. And I'm ready for all of us to have a marvelous time. <sighs> just stay focused on the task at hand. Yeah, yeah, see, I would, but uh, last time I slew the princess, you trapped me in an infinite void forever, so... I don't know if I'm going to do that again. How unfortunate that the sole person capable of slaying the princess also seems to be somewhat insane. Oh well, so long as you get the job done, it doesn't matter what sort of mental state you're in. I have one last warning for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. You're right. She won't be a problem. I'm not sure I'm a fan of my new roommate. I think there's a lot more to this situation than we've been told. You think? The situation couldn't be more straightforward. Just ignore him. In we go. The interior of the cabin is cold, a soft odour of dirt permeating the air. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. The only item of furniture is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. Before you have a chance to even think about taking it, the top of a hand appears from underneath the floorboards. Uh, hi. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous skeletal grin. Oh, she's cute. If I knew she'd be this cute, I would have stabbed her ages ago. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? Ghost. A g g, -g ghost <laughs> Shut up. Zoinks! Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, killer. I guess we've got some things to talk about, haven't we? Like how you murdered me? Sure thing, GLaDOS. Oh man, that was, uh, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm starting to get this. You know what, we're, we're running long, but we've got to go again. I want to try something.
So what is that? That's three endings so far? And I think we would have had a different ending if we had just stayed for eternity. You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. Nah, I'm not feeling it, sorry. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Do I? I mean, do any of us really have to do anything? I'm sure someone else can take care of this. Unfortunately, you're the only one who can pull this off. Well, what can I say? It, it's not going to be me. I've got better things to do. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? <laughs> nope. Fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Nah, still got better things to do. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. Hey, everyone's gotta die sometime. Death comes for us all. Death is what gives life meaning. You know, maybe, maybe everyone should die. Then, then at least, we would finally break this vicious cycle. When I said everyone, I meant everyone. That's a pretty large group to just condemn to death over a single princess. And, last I checked, you're part of everyone too, so if you think about it, walking up to that cabin and slaying her is really in your best interests as well. Yeah, it really isn't. But fine, you turn around and trek back down the path you came. Oh, would you look at that? You're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. Sorry, man. Me and the universe, not really on speaking terms. I'll just keep going the other way. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realize that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, the cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? You're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. You've doomed us all, you know that, right? But of course you do. Otherwise you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness, but it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. Yeah, it... it happens. We've all been there. 
Chapter 2, The Stranger You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. So you, uh, really weren't kidding last time, huh? She really did just straight up end the world. Last time? Last I checked, there wasn't any last time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then... Yeah, screw this guy. They might have walled off everything but the path to the cabin, but I'm sure there's plenty of other ways we can ruin his day. If by ruining my day, you mean ruining everyone's day forever, then yes, I suppose there are plenty of ways you could pull that off. Still, the world really did end last time, didn't it? We should be careful. You are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff those pathetic little voices to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. <laughs> Got a wall blocking us in this time. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Gonna go, gonna go slay that princess. You know I can tell when you're lying, right? Please take this seriously. I am begging you. I have one last warning for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. Ignore them, they're just being difficult for the sake of it. No, 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 I, I think they make a good point. Maybe, maybe we should do those things. Though it's probably too late for that this time around. But next time. Next time. The interior of the cabin is odd, the air smelling faintly of plastic, the wood of the walls fitting together at uncomfortable angles. The only furniture is a plain wooden table, its legs all the wrong lengths, causing it to tilt towards the door. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. Oh yeah, that, that is hard to look at. The blade is your implement. If he wants us to take it, maybe we should just leave it to collect dust. Or better yet, grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyways? I for one would rather have it. We don't really know what we're dealing with here. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and take that, I think. You take the blade from the table. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old wooden staircase. The steps are warped and shoddily constructed. The air seeping up from below is heavy, oppressive, with an odd stink to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs, its multi-tonal lilt adding to the already uneasy atmosphere. I love is someone there? This isn't what I expected her to sound like. What is she? I think we'd all like to know. You carefully make your way down the stairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. She locks eyes with you, one moving a little faster than the other. The loose skin of her face stretches into something resembling a smile. No. Nope. Good lord. No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. Something in her neck bulges, no. roiling under her no. skin as she starts to speak, her voice pouring out between her closed teeth. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I had a friend. Yeah, I hated that. That wasn't great. 
One moment, just need to uh, purge my memory real quick. Maybe pet this cat here. Hey, Layla. How you doing, sweetheart? <laughs> okay, okay. I think I've got enough left in the tank for one more go. Let's, uh, let's do this. Chapter one, the hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. I don't know, man. Have you considered that maybe I'm just okay with the world ending at this point? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? I mean, I just really kind of want the nightmare to end. It gets more horrible every time we go through this, but, uh, sure, sure, yeah, let's, uh, let's go find this princess. I'm sure it'll go great. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <sighs> the interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The blade is your implement. Pass. The door to the basement creaks open. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. Don't let it fool you. Princess, just sit tight. I'm here to rescue you. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist. Bind She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. Oh, um... Okay, let me get a look at those chains. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. Am I? No. You're doing the right thing. Oh, good. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna head upstairs and look for a key, and if we can't find one, then maybe we'll just, like, pick the lock with a knife. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Hey, come on now. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Oh yeah? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Well, I gotta say, it's gonna be awfully hard to slay that princess without my 
princess slaying knife, but uh, okay, you're you're the boss. Back down I go. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Eh, these things happen. What are you going to do? Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates oh, no, before raising her arm to her that. mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. No. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Yeah, I haven't liked anything that's ever happened ever. So what's one more thing to not like? We're in this to save the princess. Uh, not all of her, apparently, but, uh, but as much of the princess as we can salvage, I guess. So... You know, that is actually interesting. I'll bet if we had shown any signs of being willing to kill the princess, like if we had brought the knife down here, we would have more options right now. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, no. you place the blade against no. the ragged, self-inflicted no. wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. No, 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 no. no. You cut into her flesh. Stop. The blade is sharp. Stop. And it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Stop. Her limb falls to the ground. I hate you. And the heavy chains follow suit. I hate all of this. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No. She didn't. She clutches the wound, softly smiling as her gaze meets yours. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Yeah, off we go. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Oh, hey. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Yeah, hold on a second. Watch me. What are you doing? Apparently I'm slaying the princess. Or not. Stop that. Oh. <sighs> I thought this was all a little too easy. Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges. Wait, she dodges? Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! Are you? The blade! Move the blade! I'm sorry. I can see you're doing your best to resist what's happening to you. I'll try and make this quick. She pounces on you with the same animal ferocity she used to tear through her arm. You feel her claws on your throat, then her teeth, somehow sharp enough to pull apart your flesh and sinew with ease. You collapse to the floor, your body unresponsive as your blood pools on the ground beneath you. She stares down at your ravaged form, eyes shining in the darkness, dress stained red as your blood seeps into the fabric. When she manages to escape from this place and bring ruin to the world, know that it was all your fault. Yeah, sucks. It can't just end like this, right? 
As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 2 The Damsel You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. I was just dead. Why, why does this keep happening? I can assure you that you're not dead. And to answer your second question, you're here to slay the princess. I literally told you that a second ago. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. We can help her. We just have to find a way. Oh, is there another one of us in here? Help her? Need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. Sure, and all of us in here definitely believe you. <sighs> Just stay focused on the task at hand. Yeah, yeah. Gonna go to the cabin now. I have one last warning for you. She will lie. Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. Wink. <laughs> did you just say the word wink out loud? I, I don't think he did. No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. Uh-huh. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely empty. The air stale and musty, the floor and walls covered in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture is a plain wooden table. The blade is your implement. Um, okay. You take the blade from the table. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. Her voice carries softly up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's even more hypnotizing than before. Is it more hypnotizing than before, or is that just what we want it to be? Well, that is a very intriguing observation, voice of doubt. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm having some similar thoughts. I think we're in love. For everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just don't let her charm you. It's all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's still so beautiful. And she has both of her arms again. Did everything we just went through actually happen? It must have, because she's different. Can't you tell? You. I remember you. You're going to help me get out of here, right? Eh, you were cuter as a ghost. But sure. Or not. Man, what an utterly fascinating game. I'm not, I mean, obviously, I'm not really sure exactly where they're going with it, but just from what we've seen, the impression I get is um, kind of like the Tulpa from Supernatural, for those of you who have watched the original seasons of Supernatural. But in that episode, they had a monster, a ghost, that was essentially whatever people believed it would be. The more people believed it was like a certain thing, the more it would be like that. And ultimately, the heroes ended up convincing enough people that the monster had this specific weakness 
that they were able to eventually use that weakness to try to kill it. I mean, this is obviously a bit different. Um, in this case, we have kind of like dueling, dueling control factors because like the voices in our head and the narrator in particular also seem to be trying their utmost to shape the narrative. While we have final say on most elements, um, they're definitely there to sort of plant seeds of ideas, which can then also germinate and twist the story in the way that they think it's going to go. And then, of course, in the uh, subsequent chapters, the new interpretation of the princess is based on whatever, whatever way we ended up ultimately dealing with her. There's a lot of little details that kind of seem to reinforce that sort of meta-narrative. Like, um, the narrator getting up in arms when we told the princess that she was the one who was supposed to be able to end the world. And I think that's because by simply telling her that, it sort of wills that narrative into being. All of a sudden, she now has the ability to end the world. Likewise, when we just went in there without saying anything, without setting any sort of real narrative, and just stabbed her... There was nowhere else for the story to really go, except we then said, no, it can't be over. So it wasn't over. It never ended. There were no more endings until we chose to end it. Even the, even the horrific, like, fourth ending, the, uh, the one where we refused to go anywhere, I think that really kind of reflects the fact that um, because we hadn't shaped a specific princess for the subsequent uh, chapter... She instead became like an amalgamation of all the potential princesses that we might have created had we chosen any one of those numerous paths. Anyway, we are well past time at this point, so uh, we have to wrap this up. I'd love to keep playing, but um, you know what? The demo is out there. There's at least two more endings that I did not discover, though I think I have an idea of how, how at least one of them would go. So I encourage you to go check it out for yourself if you find this to be as interesting as I do. I believe Slay the Princess hits full launch Q2 of 2023. It'll be a standalone game, but we also have plenty more Scarlet Hollow to look forward to. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon or the uh, new YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. Hey, look at that. I got to an ending without dying. Everything goes dark, and you die. I'm sorry.